revisited a movie from your childhood, one of those movies that you haven't seen in years, but you decide one day that, hey, I wonder what it's like viewing it through adult eyes for a change. And that's exactly what I did. I decided to go back and revisit 1974's Benji, directed by Joe Camp. I was absolutely obsessed with Benji as a kid. I wanted everything there possibly was to do with that little brown dog. Everything from coloring books to watching all the movies. Of course, I had the little toy stuffed dog. I even watched Benji, Zack, and the Alien Prince on Saturday mornings. But I decided it was time to go back and watch Benji. I hadn't seen it probably in over 30 years to put an age to myself. And I saw it at a movie store for $3 on DVD. So I was like, you know what? Let's go back and visit it. It's the price of a standard rental, so why not? So I sat down, got my popcorn, got all my dog collection together, and decided to check it out. What was my verdict of it? It was actually a very interesting experience watching it from both a filmmaker and an adult perspective. I remember one of the biggest things I found interesting as a kid is that it was actually shot near my area in Texas. It was shot both in McKinney and Denton, Texas, which isn't too terribly far away from me. So it's one of those things that, you know, in retrospect of watching this movie, I think I actually want to go on a film scouting location and see if I can find the various places, like the houses and like especially Benji's old house that they show at the beginning of the movie. It's a very different film. 1970 films had a real sense of melancholy to them. I mean, they were happy, upbeat things, but you know, you watch things like The Black Hole or The Muppet Movie or A Boy Named Charlie Brown. A lot of these movies meant for kids, there was always a, like a little sense of kind of a, a, a sad and melancholy feeling to them, which I found really interesting. And going back, even though I'd say overall about 90% of this movie is cheerful and upbeat, there's still kind of a romanticized sadness to it, as, as weird as that sounds. But I think one of the most interesting things I found out about this movie, like I said, I haven't seen it in over 30 years, and yet as soon as it starts and that one little guitar string plays, I feel love all around. I instantly knew it on some weird unconscious level. It was like I had forgotten things and yet I simultaneously remembered everything perfectly at the same time. I wanted to keep the movie even when we returned it to the rental store so I'd get a tape recorder and I'd record parts of the movie and that way I could listen to parts of it. It's funny because going through the movie there were certain like little flashes in my head just remembering those scenes that I'd record and play over and over in my bedroom. But it was kind of funny and it was really interesting. There was a lot of things I really noticed that I certainly wouldn't have picked up as a kid. One of the things I noticed is, uh, especially with the dog, Higgins, that's Benji's original name. He used to play the dog on Petticoat Junction. He doesn't really look at the camera at all, ever. And that really is a testament to how good of a dog actor he is. Another thing I noticed, especially this is on my filmmaking background, all the shots were very low to the ground from a dog's eye perspective. And you know, really there's not even that much dialogue in it. It's a lot of Benji going about his day to day. He goes out, he has all these friends that he goes out and visit, everything from diner owner to a police officer to he chases this lady's cat all the time. And it's actually Aunt B from the Andy Griffith show. And even though she seems like she's really annoyed, she also seems like she kind of enjoys it as part of her routine as well. And of course, part of Benji's day is he spends time with these two children, Paul and Cindy Chapman, which, you know, hey, that was another little resonant link to me as well. But as much as the children love Benji, their dad is not going to let them have just some stray off the streets because apparently his bro brother had been attacked by a stray dog at some point and nearly died and they make this very clear. They don't really shy away from uh, Dr. Chapman is a widower, uh, Bill the diner owner is a widower, Mary the Chapman's housekeeper she talks uh, about you know her ex-husband but it's just kind of a little extra clue in their backstory of like why they are the way they are. And I mean, all these people are really nice and upbeat and friendly, but they've all had this sense of loss in their life. About the only person who didn't is Officer Tuttle, who Benji hangs out with part, shares a little popcorn, and gets dating advice from. So it's kind of a little charming effect to all these characters that Benji interacts with on a daily basis. Another thing that I didn't really think about as a kid, and of course, why would I, is that Benji was an independent film. 
It was made for about $500,000, and by the time it was all said and done, it made about 40 to $45 million, so it definitely made its money back. It actually ran during the summer of 1974 and 1975, and it was a huge breakaway success. It was at that point where a lot of G-rated films weren't really meant with the whole family-friendly thing, in the sense of, you know, a lot of kids' movies, they're, they're really meant for just really keeping a kid's attention. They aren't really there to provide like a, a major meaningful story, maybe a couple catchphrases, but they wanted something of substance because people viewed G-rated movies as just kind of a kiss of death and they didn't want to fool with it. And it's really interesting how a G-rated movie of the 70s compares to something of today. The closest thing I could think in terms of seeing a dog movie was Show Dogs, which was absolutely awful. You know, there's no CG talking dogs, there's no hip-hop musical numbers, there's no crotch shots, there's no wacky slapstick sped up camera antics. Everything's played pretty normal. And a lot of the humor just comes from like little subtle lines that are dropped here and there and just a couple performances. I, I find it really interesting that they actually did set out to make an all ages family film, something that would certainly keep the kids entertained because Benji as a dog is an incredibly cute little dog. And even today he's still just like this cute, sweet little mutt that runs around and just has friends all over town and no one really cares that he's a stray. He just kind of has this nice little life for himself. And as an adult, it has its charm as well. At one point, Benji actually meets a little girl dog named Tiffany. And of course, a lot of the shots are set up, obviously, to kind of manipulate. And I, I hate using that word, but it's all carefully edited and put together to really generate a little extra emotion. I don't really feel like it. Manipulate might be the best word, but I don't think that they're really trying to, like, get this dishonest feeling out of you. It's like, look at our cute dogs, look how talented our cute dogs are. Here you are, enjoy the cute dog movie, and that was basically it. They did some interesting choices with the editing, though. There's one scene in particular, which, spoiler, it very briefly goes into the backstory of why Benji is a stray dog. There, there are kidnappers that come in. Apparently they were going to do a con job and then it turned into something more extreme where it turned into kidnapping the Chapman children. And they didn't really explain what the original kidnapping con job was. It's like either you're going to kidnap somebody or you're not. And if you're not really going to kidnap somebody, how does that work out. How are you conning somebody into, you've kidnapped them if they're not really kidnapped? What if they show up from after school or whatever? Uh, what, do you, what do you do then? But it turned into a real kidnapping job. There are four criminals. Three of them are pretty benign as far as it goes, but then there's one by the name of Mitch, and they very clearly established from the start he's the bad one. At one point he pulls a gun on the other criminals, and part of the editing is that when Benji looks at the gun, they flash to a scene where Benji's walking with a police officer. The police officer tries to stop a robbery, and the robber shoots him because he was a police officer's dog, and they shot and killed his former owner. They didn't really go into a lot of detail, and even the gunshots were kind of muffled out by just simply doing drum beats. And again, spoilers, there is a, a scene that traumatized me as a kid and even re-watching it as an adult and especially as someone who has a couple of dogs and, and certainly loves dogs uh, there's a scene where Benji realizes that if he takes a copy of the ransom note to the family and the police hopefully they'll figure out that he knows where the kidnapped children are so he gets the note and the criminals are trying to catch him and just when Mitch reaches down to catch Benji uh, Tiffany comes out and bites him on the ankle at that point, Mitch turns around and kicks Tiffany. And it's not some little subdued thing. It's like they don't show it. It's all carefully crafted editing, again, designed to generate something that doesn't really happen. But it, it's a pretty awful scene. It was awful as a kid, and it's still just kind of oof watching it now. I don't see that being shot in a film today, especially a kid's film. Uh, no, no one really goes after the dog in a lot of films. Spoiler to the spoiler, Tiffany turns out all right and she's fine other than just like a little bit of bruising. So all's well that ends well, no dogs die in this, but it, it's a pretty rough scene and, and I think it's again that realism of the 70s, they were trying to tell a realistic 
movie instead of something goofy and wacky and slapsticky where the dog pushes a can of paint off a balcony onto the criminal's head and hijinks ensue as they all slip in a big pile of paint like Home Alone. It doesn't work out like that. This movie's played, for all intents and purposes, straight, with the exception is Benji is this exceptionally smart dog. And they do a lot of scenes where they let Benji's eyes telegraph his emotions, and he's a very facially expressive dog, so even if they didn't do all the editing to kind of give you a dog's eye perspective of what Benji's thinking, his eyes and his behaviors are really good in terms of really getting you to believe he's feeling these emotions. I mean, it's everything from being dejected and slouching down and kind of slinking off. They do a love scene uh, halfway through between Benji and Tiffany. They do everything from like what you would see the, 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 the man and the woman running towards each other in slow motion and calling out each other's name in slow motion and just being all giddy and happy and doing little romantic things together. They do that but with dogs and as Silly and corny and cheesy as it is, it works in the sense that they play it straight. And again, the dogs are freaking cute, and it's hard to not find these little animals appealing because they're just exceptionally talented. It's funny watching this movie as an adult because I, I really see it from a new perspective, especially with a lot of the tricks that they did with editing, both in terms of camera angles and just how they really tried to motivate uh, emotion through careful editing. They really put a lot of thought into this movie and it shows. It's an interesting film because I appreciated it from a technical level and as an adult, but if, again, I kind of felt that same sense of ingrained love for this movie that I did as a kid because it was like, I watched this movie just countless times. I couldn't even give you a number how many times I watched this as a kid, how many times we had to rent this from the video store, and I haven't seen this movie in decades and it was so weird, it's just like, I, I just remembered beat for beat, how the music goes, how the angles go, the little bits of dialogue, it was just like, somewhere in here it's all stored and it all came out while watching Benji again. Would I recommend Benji as a film today? Absolutely. It's a very well done film. It's very tightly paced. They, they played it as a serious movie. They played it as a real threat of danger. They played on the whole, this dog is cute and happy and you just want to hug this little dog. Just look how clever he is climbing up the, the railings and the banister or opening a pudding cup with his teeth and all these really unique little stunts that he did. The dog was 14 years old when he actually shot this film. He lived to almost 17, so this was Higgins' very last film role. The later films in the series for Benji was actually played by his daughter, Ben Jean. Higgins was the only one that did the original Benji, and, and as cute as uh, his daughter was, I, I think he really was a... As far as dogs go, as far as animals go, he was a star unto his, himself. I think this is a great film. It's almost like a documentary in some ways, the day in the life of a dog, because there's no voiceover, no, there's no human protagonist in the sense of where we, our focus shifts to them. It's always very clearly focused on Benji and his perspective and his view of the world. Because of that realism, when the sense of kidnapping comes in, it's one of those things for little kids especially. Let them know there are a couple scenes that are part of the story and not necessarily part of the reality. Overall, I'd give Benji a I'd give it a good recommendation. It's a cute film. I think a lot of people have forgotten it. In doing research for this film, I actually found out that Netflix did a 2018 reboot of Benji. And you know what? I'll go check it out. I just want to see what they do with it. I, I watched the trailer. It looks like they're trying to keep true to the, the spirit of the original Benji by keeping it a little serious and alongside the cute dog thing. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you remember growing up as a kid and watching the original Benji, certainly drop a comment down below. If you've never seen it before, again, definitely check it out. It's a charming film, has one or two little serious spots, but I think overall the sweetness of the film overpowers any of the sad scenes in this. Apparently it's on Netflix, so definitely check that out before you watch the reboot. Again, thank you so much. I'm working on my Halloween series of videos, so that will be coming up next. Uh, so that's gonna be the next couple weeks of filming. Let's see where this goes, but in any case, Thank you so much, and I'll see you that next time. Take care. Frodo, do you want
wanna watch some Benji? <gasps> you wanna watch some Benji? Is that your new favorite movie? All right, did you wanna go watch it? You wanna go watch it? Did you wanna, do you wanna see it? Oh, you like that, don't you? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, so exciting, so exciting. Oh, all right, do we need to go to the Blu-ray? All right, we're gonna go, how about you? Do you wanna see it? You wanna see it? All right, all right, let's go. Come on, come on, let's go check it out. Come on. All right, well, we gotta watch it again. Sorry, guys.